Howdy folks. So today's video is going to be kind of a rant. So uh, if you don't like those kinds of videos, then uh, I suggest you watch something else. But uh, I've wanted to make this video for a while now, uh, kind of because I want answers. Because I really, I've been experiencing something over the last six years. And as time progresses, it looks less and less like a coincidence and just from the anecdotal evidence I have it, it it's just it, it doesn't look statistically it doesn't make any statistical sense really and uh, you know I, I think there is something going on and I'd love to know if other people have the same uh, they've sort of seen the same thing and maybe if someone can help me explain it and what I've seen uh, has to do with the company Marvell now Marvell's a quite large, fabulous semiconductor manufacturer, and they make everything from systems on a chip to um, FIs is primarily what I uh, own by them. Uh, so things like USB FIs, SATA FIs, Ethernet FIs, those type devices. And over the last six years, I've owned a total of nine Marvell FIs, so Ethernet and SATA primarily. And of those uh, nine chips, uh, exactly zero of them are still alive today. Um, this particular chip under this heatsink uh, is the longest living Marvell Phi, uh, SATA Phi, that I have uh, or have ever had. This one lasted three and a half years. Most of them die within three years. And this is a really high failure rate, um, at least as, as far as I can tell, because most of the you know most of the chips that I have they're they're not Marvell. I mean, most of them are you know Intel, Realtek, MediaTek, Asmedia. There are other companies that I have, and of all the other companies, uh, which probably make up at least uh, twenty or thirty other chips, uh, I've only had one of those fail. I had an Asmedia. Uh, Satify fail, um, which I did a video on. So, given that you know I've had basically a hundred percent mortality rate of the Marvell chips um, across not only Ethernet and SATA, but different models of those of, of chips for those purposes, and those chips were put in different circuit configurations on products from different manufacturers at different times in different machines, and they all failed. Um, it, it doesn't look like a, like a coincidence. It looks like there is some systemic problem with Marvell's parts. And I just, I, I can't quite understand how, you know, I, 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 you can just do a quick search for this kind of thing and no one else really sort of seems to say that. So either I've been incredibly statistically unlucky or something is going on. And that's kind of why I want to know um, what's going on. And you know, the first thing you'd think is, well, you know, it's a physical chip failure. So you would think, well, could it be the manufacturer of the chip? And I actually don't think that's the case because as far as I know, Marvell gets most of their silicon um, manufactured by TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, which they make chips for everybody. And pretty much between Intel and them, uh, they are the two best companies at making uh, at, at making silicon of any kind, like they are, they are you know really, really adv they have really advanced uh, fab processes and everything. So I really doubt that the physical chips um, have sort of flaws in the manufacturing. I think it more has to do with the design and the layout of the chip, and it's just badly, uh, bad either badly done, which leads to failure, or the other thing I was thinking of, and I don't know if this is really true or not, is maybe they are, to reduce the price of their chips, they are sort of artificially inflating their yield by um, basically like allowing chips into the wild that maybe only marginally pass um, in certain uh, test criteria and sort of they, they, they know they're ticking time bombs, but they don't really care. And... Uh, because, of course, these are not really that high-end chips. I mean, you know, you may think it's unfair to compare a, media, or a, a Marvell chip to, like, an Intel 
chip. And I, I think that that is a fair argument. But, you know, you compare it to like MediaTek or Realtek and companies like that, they are definitely in the same ballpark. So, you know, we, we expect to see, uh, you know, them be in, in similar types of uh, failure rate, but, but they aren't. So, yeah, I, I think it has something to do with, with the, the design. And I don't know if enough about chip design to know um, if that even makes sense. But, it, yeah, it's very surprising. Um, this, was the last, this was the last device. Uh, this was in my backup server, and this failed a few days ago. And this is uh, like a four-port SATA. Uh, HBA, you can kind of see there's some discoloration on the board where this has obviously gotten hot. This, this card is not the greatest manufactured um, you know, I, I kind of was looking at this after it, after I'd pulled it out, and you'll notice that so many parts are not straight. The soldering job on this wasn't that great, but that's not what caused this thing to fail, because of course this thing was, um, this thing was working, like I said, for three years. And the way I discovered this was kind of interesting, because my backup server, I've done videos on this before, it's fully automated. It just turns on, does the backup, shuts down. Everything is fully automated, and I'll get an email if the backup fails, but other than that, it, you know, it's totally on its own. And I was just doing some routine software updates, and that's when I realized this was dying because I booted the machine manually and noticed that two disks in the um, in the array were missing. And that was very strange, and I rebooted the system, and then another disk was missing, but these ones are back online. And I actually went back through the logs, and this card, um, basically, for the last two weeks, uh, when the system comes up, some of these links uh, are frozen. Some combination of these, the links are frozen. And so ZFS doesn't see the disk. And then when it reboots, some of the disks come back online and it resilvers those disks. And so ZFS has been masking the fact that this has been failing for about two weeks. And uh, I narrowed it down to this by looking through the logs, uh, the kernel log, and noting, you know, since the beginning, uh, which ATA channels had their link freeze at some point. And it was channels 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then I correlated those channels to the actual ports. And this controller runs channels 9, 10, 11, and 12. So uh, clearly this was the fault, uh, the fault. I pulled it out and replaced it and uh, problems went away. So interesting failure mode on this. The, the failure mode on the Ethernet FIs was also kind of interesting because they all failed in a similar way where um, the, the, you'd start to put a lot of traffic through the, the NIC and then it would start, the, the, the driver would start complaining about uh, malformed data coming back from the, the controller and you'd, you'd inspect it and, and I did some debugging at one point because I wanted to know and it was, the controller was shifting like bit, like, like byte and bit shifting the data uh, around uh, as it was sending it uh, through an interrupt into the, like it was, it just things didn't make any sense. Like the chip wasn't clocking data out right or something, I don't know. And, and it gradually got worse over a period of a few days and by the time I had the replacement network cards for those machines, uh, they were basically non-operational. Um, so I've had I just had weird experiences with Marvel stuff. So I don't know. Um, you know, I guess I guess that that's the rant I wanted to make. If anyone knows, if anyone has had this with either Marvel or for a different company, I'd love to know. If you know why, I'd also love to know. But uh, yeah, I just. It just, it's weird. I, I, I mean, I won't be buying any more Marvel equipment. I haven't been for a couple of years now because, like I said, I've been seeing this. And I, this thing was kind of what allowed me to, you know, have a little, little bit of hope left that, you know, maybe everything else was a coincidence. But then when this died, I kind of was like, no, 100% failure rate. That's not a coincidence. Something weird is going on. So anyway, I don't know if there was a point to this video, but I wanted to blabber on for 10 minutes. And I've, success I've successfully done that. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching.